I think this is a, just to acquaint you with what we are doing. I am very um, impressed by the speakers today. They have touched the right uh, buttons about what is going on in Africa, what we should do, and uh, it's also inspirational. But one of the things that uh, UPF has given us the platform to do is well, after all of this said and done, what are the actions? What do we want to do? How do we make a contribution? And areas. There are so many areas where we can help or we can uh, contribute. But one of the things that we have come up with, which we want to share with you, is the uh, begging problem about uh, electricity and energy. Africa. How do we address it? How does it actually improve so that uh, within the current sustainable development goal, we can begin to see changes that will uh, lead to more prosperity in Africa. Having said that, the UPF set up a committee, a working group, to look into that. And we've had, had a series of meetings we just want to acquaint you with what is going on and get your feedback and contribution uh, to this so as to see that we from here are linking up with people on the ground in Africa to make contributions. Yeah, thank you. Excellent introduction. Yeah. yeah, thank you to the previous speakers as well. I, I really enjoyed listening to you. Um, like Ibrahim, I'm also an Ayaseka, so I, uh, I can only say if any of your children or has the opportunity to, to travel and work with Ayasek, do it. It was one of the biggest gifts I ever got. Um, why am I here today? I, on the one hand, because uh, there's... I'm a, I'm a bit African as well. I, I grew up in Africa. I was born in Tanzania and I live uh, seven years in Nigeria and uh, four years in Sudan. Um, and uh, as Robin was mentioning, I worked for 18 years with Siemens, the, the German engineering company, and the last five years I was there, I worked with their energy business. And so that's what brought me together with uh, Dr. Bello and, uh, and a couple of others. So we, we came together to think about, okay, sustainable development goals. What could UPF do? You know, is there a particular SDG that UPF could, could support with. And uh, as uh, Aliu explained, we, we've chosen SDG 7, which is energy access. The ambition is for everybody in the world to access energy by 2030. Um, since the SDG goes and since the Paris Climate Conference, a lot has been happening uh, in, in developing countries. Um, around new energy projects. Generally though, these projects tend all to be on a very large scale. Yeah? So you've got the World Bank involved and multilateral uh, funding and uh, governments and the Department for International Development. So maybe the big step forward is we're no longer just building Thermal power plants, which as we know are bad for the world and are causing climate change, a lot of renewable energy is, is being built in these new projects. But unfortunately, well, fortunately on the one hand, they're, they're big and they're still reaching only a few. A lot of these large renewable energy projects, whether they are wind farms or solar farms, are still located close to big cities. So when we sat down, we said, how can, how can we really help? Um, and our assumption is that where we can help, well, it's two ways really. It's one, to see whether we can assist where nobody else is assisting. Because, you know, where the Department for International Development is working with the World Bank and the Kenyan government, we don't need to go in and do the same thing. Um, so our assumption is that we, we can help in rural, rural areas, yeah, where the energy network, the energy transmission network, doesn't get to, yeah? With small scale, probably solar, given the wealth of solar energy that, that Africa has. 
either helping smaller villagers with individual solar systems in households, so that can, people can power uh, their phone, uh, utensils in the kitchen, uh, a television, or maybe on a slightly larger scale, you know, actually helping a village or several villagers, not only to power homes, but also to help workshops, to help small industry, <coughs> to help farmers. How many farmers aren't able to irrigate their land because they don't have a proper pump? If you can electrify, you can have a, a water pump, you know, that gives you the amount of water you really need to make that land more productive. That gives the, black, the blacksmith the electricity to power tools to become more productive. Yeah. Um, so the, the first thing we would like to look at is what is the need? So if the assumption about small scale is right, what is the need and where is that need? And this is where UPF then comes in the place, in, in, into play, because what can UPF offer that the Department for International Development doesn't? UPF has a network across Africa, a network of strong partners, and those are the people who can help us decide where does it make sense to do a project, and where are there partners locally that can help in that implementation? Because as has been said in several other presentations today, it's not about you know, companies or funding or from the north going and doing it in the south, yeah? It's, it's about finding the partners locally and enabling them mm. to do a local project, yeah. yeah? So, you know, if we are going to have that solar farm and a microgrid, as they are called, just a small grid that gets the electricity into homes, we need to make sure that some of that fund, at least some of that funding, comes from Africa, from that village, from that town, from that region. We need to make sure that the local government supports it, yeah, and won't lose interest, uh, you know. We, we need to make sure that local entrepreneurs say, I really like this idea, you know, I'm in with you, yeah, I'll contribute, I'll help you implement the project. We need to make sure that there's a technical school in that area that can support the maintenance and operation of the grid and of the solar farm once whoever has installed it, you know, has gone on to their next job, yeah? So it needs to be a, a, a local effort. So we're really, I guess, I'm looking at this as enablers more than anything else. Facilitators trying to uh, convene mainly local players to make this possible. Now, there may still be areas where we will need help from the UK or elsewhere, yeah? I mean, uh, for example, uh, in order to make this something sustainable, you need to actually do a piece of work on what is the, the I'll call it business case, but I mean it in a good sense, uh, behind this, you know? Why are we doing this? Who needs this electricity? For what? And are they going to be a part of that and say, yes, we want this, we're going to support it, and we're going to run it going forward, yeah? But in order to put that business case together, you, you hopefully there will be capacity locally to help us with that, but we might need some people uh, from some advisory bodies that are doing similar work in other African countries to help us bring that sustainable model together and work with the local communities to design that, that, that model, yeah? So these are really the two things where we thought UPF's uh, big strong point here is its network. UPF will help find these partners locally to build these projects and then maintain them locally. Um, and UPF also has the knowledge locally to know where is there a need for these projects and what need is there and help us flesh that out too. So at this point, it's still sort of at a big idea level. <laughs> um, but we are going to now reach out to, to UPF chapters to get their feedback on this and see, you know, where are there countries or regions in the UPF network that say, yeah, we really think we have partners locally that could help us with this. Uh, Dr. Bello, for example, has one or two organizations in Nigeria that have already voiced their, their interest. In, in supporting a project like this. Yeah, so if any of you uh, would like to, to join as well and can help, yeah, please, uh, you know, come and talk to us, yeah.
Definitely welcome. Yeah. <laughs>